In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can take your UI to the next level as far as graphically importing different assets that you might want to use instead of the defaults that are contained in the Unreal Engine. To begin, I'm assuming that you have already set up as far as your player start blueprint or whichever character you're working with as far as an Unreal Engine level and that you're comfortable with making the demo uh, UI for the widget blueprint. Now, I've also added one additional folder here. The idea behind this is that we're not going to be focusing strictly on what is contained inside of Unreal, but instead you can go out to a design program such as Photoshop, GIMP, or Illustrator and create graphical assets and then import them into your game project. Now, a couple of things to point out here. Remember whenever you're working as far as an Unreal project is concerned. So if I come in and navigate to this specific project, remember when you are making a folder, it's going to want to go into the content folder of the main project folder. So here you can see I actually just made a graphics folder that that's going to contain everything as far as buttons, uh, maybe a border, etc. You can really store anything in there. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And let's go ahead, I'm going to hop into and double click and open the demo UI. So I already have a button here and I'm going to talk you through a little bit about what you're looking for whenever you start making a UI element here. So first off, I'm actually going to hop in here real quick and I'm going to change the scale here of my UI so folks can see. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So right now in the hierarchy for the canvas panel, I have one button. I'm going to go ahead and add a second button from my palette. And I'm just going to reposition it kind of right below this one here. Now, when you are working as far as your UI design by default, yes, you can get a UI up and running in Unreal without having any of the graphics in place. However, if I come down here now, a couple of things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to in the details when you start adding assets. Number one, under the slots, for your specific size of X and Y, you're going to wanna to take this into consideration whenever you're working with and importing an asset. So to give you a comparison, the button above here this was actually set as far as the image size, which you can see down here at the bottom since I already set up as far as the scale, is 220 by 45. So that's something to take into consideration whenever you're first starting out with the button size. So maybe I change this to 240 and let's do 25. Two twenty, rather. So I'll do two twenty. There we go. Now the second thing, though, that you're going to want to pay attention to, I'm going to minimize slot so that we can look at the appearance section here. In previous videos and lectures, what we did was we just changed the tint of the normal base UI element. However, if you expand out as far as each of these items here, as far as normal, hovered, and pressed you have an image area here where you could actually place a new image for the button here. So for instance here, let's see, so I just made this 220 by 25. Let's hop into Photoshop here and we'll do a new document, 220 by 25. Now when you're making a graphic in whichever program you choose. You want to make sure first off that you don't have a background color. This transparency is going to become important as far as the layout is concerned. So what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to choose some different colors here. Maybe we'll do a bright yellow and we'll take the stroke down to 1.0. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to make the base button element here. Kind of 
Okay, there we go. So now I can come in and kind of reposition that just a little bit. There we go. When you're ready to actually export the published element here, you're going to go to File and you want to make sure that you're exporting as a PNG file in whichever program you're working in. So you can see here, you may need to actually navigate to your project folder into the content folder. And again, I made this UMG graphics folder to hold all of my assets. Do you need to do that? No, you could technically put them directly into the content folder. But I'm going to go ahead and call this button to base. And then I'm going to say save. And let's hop back over into Unreal here. Because I had Unreal opened and I saved in the current open project, I'm going to tell it to import. And now what should happen is while still being in this UI area, I'm going to keep this second button highlighted. But if I click under the images, now you can see that my texture popped up that I made in Photoshop. So I click and place that and I can compile and save. And let's go ahead and just pop in real quick and take a look here. So I need to save as far as setting up my scaling here, which I could actually kind of stop here, come in and do that. So if I come in and kind of scale that to sit near that there. There we go, a little bit better. You can see now that it actually uses the graphics that I made. The last thing I want to point out more specifically to buttons, and really this will get you started as far as making your own UI layouts, is notice whenever I do a hover over each of these buttons, you see how they turn gray. Let me stop the demo and come back into the UI. When you are doing graphical designing for buttons, you need to take into consideration that we just did the normal or resting state. You would still need to make a button design for hovered, to replace the default color of hovered and then also the pressed version as well. So in total per button for a UI, you're making three different graphics because you need to actually tell the program what you want to do with that. So that's the basics as far as using an external graphics program and importing into Unreal and working with it.